Good morning, everyone. This is Joe Mead. I'm a senior account exec here at NAC Systems, and I have with me today my friend, my colleague, the chief operating officer at NAC Systems, Mr. Sandy Barora. Good morning, everyone. Hey, and Joe. Before we start, I wanted to give a brief introduction, a little background on NAC Systems and what we do. We are a niche consulting organization and we provide digital transformation services in the area of sales, service, marketing, and commerce. We are a gold partner and a recognized SAP expert. And our focus from a solution standpoint is the Hybris customer engagement and commerce suite. And that's comprised of Hybris Commerce, Hybris Marketing, and Hybris Cloud for Customer, which is the sales cloud and the service cloud. We have a very strong background and foundation in SAP ERP. We're headquarters right here in beautiful New Jersey, and we have about 300 consultants globally. So uh, today, Sandeep and I are looking to discuss about how businesses can engage with their customers on their uh, online buying journey. We're going to bust some myths. We're going to share some best practices. And we want to walk you through uh, the process involved in wrapping up an SAP Hybris Commerce Platform implementation in just about 90 days. 90 days, Sandeep, is that a typo? Ah, uh, no. People talk about zero to uh, something in 60 seconds, zero to 16 to three seconds, but no, it's not a myth at all. Uh, it's zero to high risk in 90 days, and I think that's what we want to take our viewers, our audience today, as to how that can be done and how it's been done with the, many of the customers that you're working with. So let's take them on this ride today. Awesome. You're going to want to listen to this. But first, Sandeep, look what I got last night. Uh -huh. Headphones I talked to you about. Oh, and I okay. A little bit about my shopping experience. So I had received a promotional email with a discount for this particular headphones. So I was excited to go online and search for the headphones and, and get them into my stereo system. Um, kind of a brief overview. I first started, and, and that was probably the first uh, problem that I had, was that the mobile site was very frustrating. But I kept going. Um, even though the navigation was very painful, it was very frustrating, but I wanted these headphones. I uh, navigated through the site and, you know, I, I hit on some filters. I eventually got to the headphones and I'm just about ready to hit the put in my cart, click to buy button when I was notified that the headphones were no longer in stock. So you know what I did at that point? I went to a completely different site and bought the headphones. So you can see that my experience with this non-user friendly site and the lack of attention to the fact that these items weren't even in stock uh, was very <laughs> frustrating. And it reminded me that uh, businesses first interest is the customer's experience. So uh, Sandy, I, I, how, well, how do you feel that experience in the online world affects customer behavior? Well, I can feel your pain, Joe. I, I'm sure you wanted to listen to your Henry Belafonte and you wanted to have those headphones and how much you wanted it. And, and I think this is what we are talking about as to how organizations uh, need to relate to their uh, customers. So most of the customers today do not think of this whole process of engaging with the customer as a different customer journey as well as an organization journey. So this example that you just have given me, to me is an example of how customers are thinking about an organization view of how you are going through the process. 
uh, if I put it simply, it's more of, hey, let's get this person to our website and we'll sure sell him something. And, and guess what? Like, what you've done is exactly what organizations don't want. You, they have created a level of distrust. Uh, you have got regret at the end of the process and you've jumped on to another website, which is where uh, you've got the kind of experience that you're looking for. So the key thing over here is organization today need to look at a journey from a customer perspective, not from an organization perspective, meaning let's look at what exactly you want. How do you go about going through this process? Instead of saying, oh, I need to bring him to the side, then get him attracted to buying something, but I don't care if the product is there or not. So uh, the key message, I guess, uh, from, from the experience that you have had is organizations should look at creating customer experiences to manage and to provide a high level of customer journey. Well, Sandeep, you're a trained professional. You make it sound very easy. How should businesses engage with their customers on this customer journey? Well, there is a science to it, which is uh, number one, let's understand what uh, the customers, and that includes you and me, what is the way that we go out and buy a product today? So number one, unlike uh, the years gone by where we used to just walk to a store, find something, uh, and just buy it and used to go home. Today, we really live in an omni-channel world. What does that mean? I have a choice of going to a mall, going to a store. I have a choice of going to a marketplace on the web. I have a choice to go to the brand, you know, the end company's store and buy it over there. So number one is to recognize that we live in an omni-channel world. So that's one thing. Second thing, we just to look at it from uh, a scientific perspective, let's look at what are the various phases that a customer goes through uh, in their buying journey. And if you look at it broadly, there is the research phase of it, wherein, hey, I'm thinking of a product, let me go out uh, onto the web and do my research. Then there is the actual buying experience, the buying phase, which is when I've shortlisted my product and have to go, uh, rather go at a certain location, whether physical or online, and buy that product. And uh, the third thing is, I've got my product, I'm enjoying that product, so that's the third phase. And the fourth phase is advocacy. I liked it, I speak to my friends, I post about it. So those are the four phases. So how does an organization engage with their prospective customers across this entire journey. Hey, that's good insight, Sandy, but you know that um, a lot of organizations are concerned about building an e-commerce site because they believe uh, building a site and the deployment is complex and expensive. What are your thoughts on that? Myth, myth, myth. Huh? I think one of the things that you're doing today is busting some of these myths. So. As I always say, you know, you can uh, make the experience of drinking a glass of wine complex. So yeah, if someone wants, they can make an experience very complex, but uh, certainly implementing going live uh, with an e-commerce site should not be uh, a complex experience, should not be expensive uh, at all. Because uh, uh, we, all, we all go back to how things were done in the past and everything had to be custom built and everything had to be started from scratch. That's how things used to be very, very complicated. But now in the world of having e-commerce platform, that's, that's not the way things uh, need to be. I mean, uh, let me ask you this. If you go to a uh, commerce site, what are the kind of things you are looking for over there? Well, I think it uh, it certainly needs to be an appealing, user-friendly site and, and cut down Correct. on the frustration. Correct. Uh, you sometimes would say, hey, if I've got this uh, uh, product that I'm interested in, let me go out and compare this to other products. Uh, let me also see, hey, uh, the product that I'm buying is there any kind of promotion going on for that? Is that something of interest to you? Did you go through that process when you were buying your headphones? I did. 
um, you know, the ability to search products, to compare products, to look at the features. Um, I want to know delivery dates, you know, when I can receive the product, uh, all of that type of information. And I want to be able to get confirmations uh, in the mail if I have specific <laughs> questions. That is correct. So, so what you've explained to me is what you as a buyer want. Now let's take an organization view. So if an organization wants to have an e-commerce site so that they can provide you these kind of uh, features, the, in order to be able to do that, if you look at it from the organization perspective, from the feature functionality perspective, what you're talking about gets into seven or eight different categories of features. So number one, let's say when you go in, uh, there should be user management, account management. So you can store some information in case you want to go back or in case you want to be storing some information around, say, a credit card. So feature number one that the organization wants is user management, account management. Number two, uh, they have to go and activate this functionality around shopping cart. Uh, shopping cart, this is where you are actually going over there, uh, looking at the product that you want, see the price, click on the button. So that's feature number two. Feature number three, you want to be able to see, as you said, all the various features of this product. So in, in e-commerce term, that's having a product catalog and that's doing content management. Now, the fourth thing is, as you said, you want to know when exactly can you get this product. You want to get this information uh, when the product is shipped out. Uh, you also want to be able to see the pricing. So in uh, e-commerce term, that functionality is called order management. From an organization perspective, what I also uh, want to do is be able to present to you the right product so I want to personalize some of the content. So another feature that you look in an e-commerce site is personalization. That, uh, that would help me to be able to sell. Now, the other thing is that I know when you are coming and buying a product, I might want to sell you a three-year warranty on that product. Uh, so what are these? This is the opportunity for an organization to do cross-sell or upsell. You know, you might be buying a certain model, but the organization, based on what you're looking to have, they might want you to buy a higher model. So upsell kind of a thing. Let's talk about order management. I mean, you need to have the pricing related to that product. You need to be able to do things like when this product need can be delivered and what is the cost of uh, shipping. Uh, things like this is all uh, in, clubbed into one set called order management. So an e-commerce solution should have the capabilities to do order management, and this is an important one when it comes to B2C, is uh, having information about credit cards. So, you know, the information about payment gateways, uh, being able to capture some uh, information or link to uh, the credit card that you use for your transaction. So ability to, number one, maintain that information as permitted by law, but importantly, be able to integrate with various payment gateways such that you can do the transaction. These are some of the capabilities that what you, you need in an e-commerce site. And Sandeep, the, uh, the big elephant in the room, do organizations need to set aside a huge budget to get started on this e-commerce journey? Well, I, I, I tell you, uh, we just had one of our customers, it's a leading consumer products brand, they went live in uh, 12, 12 and a half, 13 weeks time with their uh, e-commerce site. Uh, and they followed the same approach. Uh, and did they end up uh, spending a lot of money? Not at all. And a couple of things come into play. When organization take this approach of saying, yes, I'm not gonna build something from scratch, not everything has to be custom. Let's use a e-commerce platform like Hybris Commerce, which has got many of these features built in. And we build this whole thing using a global delivery model. Organization do not have to spend millions of dollars that they are used to. Uh, if you look at the approach that we are talking about over here, uh, our customers have been able to build a complete e-commerce site using our uh, global delivery model using our approach to prioritization 
uh, in as little as $250,000. So no, uh, we don't have to go crazy in spending millions of dollars over here. Well, I think that's very important, not only for large organizations, everybody's cost conscious, but the small to medium sized businesses now have the opportunity to compete with the large organizations uh, for that Absolutely. customers. That, that, that is correct. And I, I, and I think our experience has uh, told us this, uh, that what we are talking about over here, these are not uh, something that has not been proven. This is something that's proven so much so here at the uh, NAC system, leveraging our capabilities. We have actually come out with two uh, RDS, rapid deployment packages, both for uh, B2B as well as a B2C scenario, wherein we offer our customers uh, to, to kind of... Uh, get an e-commerce solution or hybrid e-commerce solution integrated with their backend ERP system up and running in, in 90 days at a cost of $50,000. And, and it's not that I'm just throwing a number over here. This, there is a very structured approach doing this thing. So the structured approach, number one, consists of us sitting down with our customer, sharing with them these three key bundles of features that a hybrid commerce platform we work with some of the accelerators that are available out of the box from Harbors Commerce. We take an approach of wherein we show them some of the prototypes so that it's not a theoretical discussion. The customers from the very beginning start to get a feel of what their commerce side is gonna look like, what are the capabilities that they have. You know, other things that we spoke about, product catalog, uh, capabilities for upsell, uh, basic uh, uh, the commerce shop, any kind of a personalization. So we show them uh, all these things in the very beginning. Do all the configuration or customization using the best practices that uh, the solution has to offer as well as we as an organization bring our expertise to the table. And uh, in, in a span of uh, these uh, 90 days, dividing this work into various phases uh, build up a site, and uh, so th there are two RDSs uh, that are available, RDS being Rapid Deployment Solution for B2B and B2C, wherein a customer can get from zero to hybrid in 90 days, uh, and uh, they can do that within a cost of uh, 250K. Fantastic. So you see the simple mantra for success in this digital era is to respect the customer's preference for researching, selecting, and transacting with brands. Uh, and, you know, I think um, what we need to remember is to deliver a digital experience that engages the visitors and converts them into a loyal customer. It's, it's not complex. It's not expensive. I might add, uh, Sandeep, that uh, customers and prospects can reach us at naxsystems.com. We also have some uh, contact information uh, on, on the screen as well. Sandeep, any closing thoughts before we uh, leave today? Absolutely, no more sitting back uh, and saying uh, hybrid commerce or commerce site is not for me. Um, let's let's uh, go out and let's get you all uh, having a very professional e-commerce site and start to helping you uh, engaging with your customers uh, no more worries about complexity, time, and money. Let's go from zero to hybrids in 90 days. Thank you.